of Banffy. Uh, it's great to see you, uh, Christina, again. And um, the, the pent-up demand uh, that, that, that we feel, I think of Tuscany and I think of uh, where Banffy is and, and the, the accommodations there. And it almost brings tears to my eye that, that, that someday we, we want to be able to, to go back to, to places like that. I mean, people want to go anywhere, but Tuscany is, is, is such a special place and, and, and uh, you know, what you have over there. And then you've got, is, is Banffy, in terms of the wine you produce, more cases than, than any other uh, winemaker in Italy? Are you the largest? No, we're not the biggest by volume at all. But what Banfi, Castello Banfi is in Tuscany is the largest contiguous property. So we do have about 7,000 acres, the size of Manhattan, roughly. So we are the largest private property. But on that, you get our Brunellos made, all of our wines. But it's truly an agricultural estate. So when we have our Relay and Chateau property, where um, you visited with your family, Joe, it's called Il Borgo. And we also have a Michelin star restaurant, a glass museum. So it's truly like an agricultural, sustainable, luxury experience. So you know exactly how bookings are, and I'm sure you know what the state of, of tourism is in Italy right now. What, any improvement at all, or we're just back in, in the, the soup again, Christina? Well, right now they're back in the soup. We are. Um, April 6th, so just after Easter, they will announce new, new easing of restrictions. So the easing will probably come first within travel within the regions of Italy, then within Europe, and lastly, the United States. But we are all hoping that by like mid-summer, to September is when people are gonna start booking again. They're booking on very short notice, which is the pandemic effect. But what we're also seeing, Joe, is that people want outdoor experiences. They, they don't wanna maybe spend so much time in the big cities like Florence and Rome, and we're positioned just between the two. But they kind of want that experience touring the vineyards on a bike, having a cooking class, being holistic, wine tasting in the vineyards. So we're seeing people a lot of interest in booking, but they're actually making the reservations much closer to the date they're going to travel. Do you do you see a a issues with restaurants being closed so that the 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 winemaking business has been uh, difficult for the past year as well, or is it more of a niche? Uh, wine where you're you're still supplying as as much as you can uh, as much as you can grow as much as much as you can make. Well, we do see our sales um, in Europe slow down because such a big part, and particularly in Italy, is in the restaurants and the wine bars. I mean, it's just the way of life and the visitors who come into Italy from all over the world. We sell in about 90 different countries our Banfi wines, and we're seeing certain markets hit a lot harder. Um, the U.S. has such a strong retail channel that it doesn't suffer quite as much. But what we're seeing now, and I heard on the previous segment, is people are spending their, you know, subsidized checks. They are spending it on leisure and hospitality. So there is a huge boom right now going on in a lot of the restaurants and travel. So people are planning their trips, well, they're dining out at the restaurants, and they're drinking better wines. Okay. They want to spend it on good wines, and why not Italian? And the idea, Joe, is kind of to escape to Italy by a good meal, and over the meal you can talk about your pending bucket list trip to Banfi in Tuscany. Right. Well, it, it's a special place. We appreciate having you on. Uh, Christine Montecino is a, is a special uh, place as well. Just really um, wish you well, and, and hopefully everything will be back to normal, uh, you know, in our lifetime, I hope, this year. I know. Thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.